I started rowing in 2005 uh, and I've been rowing since then. I've competed internationally in all Olympic boat classes um, and at the London Olympics I rowed in the double skull and the single skull. I switched to rowing from track and field. Um, I had to stop track and field because I was injured and was told I wouldn't be able to run again. Um, I initially really enjoyed rowing because I liked the people, I liked the camaraderie of the boat club, I liked the team aspect of the sport. I found it a new challenge, something fun. Um, but pretty soon I realised that this could actually be um, my Olympic dream. Um, and from that moment that that seed was planted, I realised that there was the potential to, to do something if I put my mind to it and really worked at it. The last six months of the Olympic campaign were pretty interesting. Um, I'd been selected in the double skull with Brooke Prattley, uh, which was new for me. I've rowed with Kerry Hall for the past two years. Um, but the first day Brooke and I got into the boat, uh, Brooke pulled up sore uh, and she was out with a rib stress fracture for a long time. Um, had to make a decision what would happen. Um, we decided to try and qualify the single for the Olympics. Once I'd qualified the single, I had to race it at the Olympics. Um, and at that stage we were still waiting to see if Brooke would be alright to race in the double. Um, about six weeks out from the Games, we got Brooke back in the boat and it was all systems go, so I decided to prioritise the double skull because um, it was a very special boat uh, to both of us and ended up racing in both categories. I think there was a big difference when I look back on Beijing uh, compared, to, compared to London. In Beijing, I really focused on working really hard, um, but there was so much that I didn't know about um, so many other aspects of the sport, of how to think, of how to race, of how to approach um, big competitions. And I, I find it fascinating to actually think about how little I knew then and how little I didn't even realise was also out there. And so for the four years since then, I've really enjoyed just learning a lot more about, about me, what makes what makes me do what I want to do and um, why I do this sport. And now I'm even more certain that there's a lot more to give and there are a lot more challenges out there and that's why I keep going to Rio. Before London, I half thought that I would retire after London, um, but when I realised that I could actually be competitive in the single skull, it really planted that seed of, gee, I wonder what I can do and I know that there's so much more improvement out there and so the next four years I'd really like to just explore what my limits are and how much I can improve and, um, and see if I can get a better result in four years, four years time. It is so exciting that Sydney has the World Cups in um, 2013 and 2014. It's, I mean, what was so amazing about London um, was just the atmosphere of racing in that sort of environment and to be able to do that at home and to have people who have supported me right throughout my rowing career actually be able to come and watch me race and have people exposed to the sport of rowing I think is wonderful because it's a fantastic sport. Um, it's a sport that I think is particularly fantastic for young schoolgirls and the more people that get to see our sport, I think it's fantastic. So I hope lots of other countries come out and I think they will because Penrith is a great course and it's going to be a fantastic event. I think the advice that I'd give to young rowers is enjoy yourself. Make sure you're um, using the sport in the right way. Um, it's a great way to be fit, it's a great way to make friends. Um, and initially go out there and enjoy yourself and you never know what can, what can come from that. But that's the most important foundation for anyone.